Here we're given f of x comma y over the region defined here, where the region d is x squared plus y squared less than or equal to nine. We're asked to evaluate the given double integral. Notice how this double integral is given in rectangular form. We're actually gonna convert this to polar form to determine the value of this double integral. But let's first take a look at the region of integration, the region x squared plus y squared less than or equal to nine. We should recognize that x squared plus y squared equals nine would be a circle centered at the origin with the radius of three shown here. And because we have the inequality x squared plus y squared less than or equal to nine, the shaded region here is the region of integration. Next, we're converting a double integral in rectangular form to polar form. We need to write the function f of x comma y as f of r comma theta. So we need our function f to be a function of r and theta. We do this conversion using our formulas provided here. And then differential a, which in rectangular form would be dx dy or dy dx in polar form, converts to r dr d theta. So it's important to remember we have an extra factor of r here when converting to polar form. And then of course we have to find new limits of integration in terms of r and theta. So before we set this up though, let's look at this graphically. The function f of x comma y is graphed in blue. And again, the region of integration is this circular region here in the xy plane. Because the function f of x comma y is non-negative over this region, our double integral is going to give us a volume under the blue surface above the xy plane over the circular region. And notice how this actually is going to be half of a sphere, so we could evaluate the double integral using a geometric formula, which we'll do to check our work after we determine the value of the double integral. So going back to our work, notice how the given function f of x comma y is equal to the square root of, let's write this as nine, and then instead of minus x squared minus y squared, let's write that as minus the quantity x squared plus y squared. Which means our function f of r comma theta in polar form would be equal to the square root of nine minus r squared, because remember x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So again, we have the double integral over the region d of f of x comma y, which would be the square root of nine minus x squared minus y squared, and we have dx dy. In polar form would be the double integral. The integrand function again is f of r comma theta, which we now know is the square root of nine minus r squared, and then we have r dr d theta. And now we need to determine the limits of integration that would trace out the region of integration. So we first want to find the limits of integration for r. Well, because this is the region of integration, r is going to be from zero to three. So with respect to r, we integrate from zero to three. And then for the limits of integration for theta, to trace out this region, they would have to be from zero all the way to two pi radians for one full revolution. So the limits of integration for theta are from zero to two pi. Now let's go and evaluate this double integral in polar form on the next slide. Notice how to find the antiderivative with respect to r will have to perform u substitution. So we're going to let u be equal to nine minus r squared and therefore differential u is going to be equal to negative two r dr. Notice that we have r dr here, so let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative two. So we know that negative one half differential u is equal to r dr. So let's write all this in terms of u to help us find the antiderivative. Because u is equal to nine minus r squared, this would be u to the one half and then r dr is equal to negative one half du. The antiderivative with respect to u would be negative one half times u to the three halves divided by three halves, or instead of dividing by three halves, we can multiply by two thirds, which means the antiderivative with respect to r would be negative one half times u to the three halves is really nine 
minus r squared to the 3 halves. Then instead of dividing by 3 halves, let's multiply by 2 thirds. Notice how here this simplifies nicely to negative 1 third. So we'd have negative 1 third. And then when r is equal to 3, we have the quantity 9 minus 3 squared to the 3 halves minus, when r is 0, we have 9 minus 0 squared to the 3 halves. Now simplifying, we have a double integral from 0 to 2 pi, and we have negative 1 third times, here we're going to have 9 minus 9, which is 0 to the 3 halves, which is 0, then minus 9 raised to the power of 3 halves. 9 to the 3 halves is equal to 27, so we have a negative 27. Well, well negative 1 third times negative 27 is equal to 9. So we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 90 theta. So the antiderivative is 9 theta, which we can write as 9 times theta. So we have 9 times 2 pi minus 0, which equals 18 pi. And again, because our function is non-negative over the region of integration, we just found the volume of this half sphere. And let's check our work using the volume formula for a sphere. And we should be able to tell from f of x comma y, the sphere is going to have a radius of 3, the same as the radius of the region of integration. So because the volume of a sphere is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed, and our double integral is equal to half the volume of a sphere. So we would have the volume is equal to one half times four thirds times pi times r cubed, where r is equal to three. So we have three cubed. Notice how this simplifies. So we have the volume is equal to two thirds pi times three cubed, which would be 27, or 27 over one. Again, this simplifies. So 1, 3, and 3, and 9, 3 is in 27. Notice how we get the same result. We get 18 pi, which again is the volume of our half sphere. So these would be cubic units. So using the geometric formula, we found the volume to be 18 pi cubic units, which is the same value we found using the double integral. In many cases, we won't be able to verify our double integral using a geometric formula, but in this case we can. I hope you found this helpful.